first and foremost is our safe harbor language, as I will be making forward-looking statements. So for those of you that don't know Taranga, we're a West African gold producer. Uh, we've got an operating mine, Sabadala, in Senegal. We've just completed our second mine, Wayon, in Burkina Faso. Golden Hill, also located in Burkina Faso, is our most advanced exploration project, and we're now taking that into the feasibility stage of development. And then in Cote d'Ivoire, we've got a number of earlier stage, but very attractive exploration properties. So when you look at Taranga, our vision is to become a mid-tier gold producer over the next five years. And that means capable of producing about half a million ounces of gold annually. And we believe that if we can increase production, we're going to see a significant rise in EBITDA, earnings, and free cash flow. So with our second mine now in production, Wayon, moving forward into 2020, we'll be producing between three and 350,000 ounces of gold per year. We think Golden Hill could be our third mine and take us to that mid-tier status. And then Cote d'Ivoire will take us beyond where we will be with Golden Hill. So when you look at this organic growth pipeline, you can see that we can become a mid-tier gold producer simply by executing. We don't need to issue any more stock. We don't need to dil dilute shareholders. We just need to focus and execute. So looking at our assets within that organic growth pipeline, starting off with Sabadala, it is our flagship mine. It's been in production for a decade and it continues to report record results. We've had three record years in a row. Last year we produced 245,000 ounces. It was a 5% increase over the previous year. We beat the low end of our cost guidance and we generated $50 million in net <coughs> free cash flow. So far this year through the first half of the year we'll be reporting our third quarter results in a couple of weeks, but through the first half of the year record production and record net free cash flow. Before I leave Sabadell, I want to focus on our ability to add reserves. As you can see, reserves went down between 17 and 18. That's because we haven't drilled. So when you look back over the last decade since our IPO, we produced nearly 2 million ounces of gold, and yet we still have over 2 million ounces in reserves, which equates to a 10-plus year mine life and a large resource base to extend that. Now with our second mine up and running, We'll begin drilling Sabadell as well as a number of our other properties as we focus on exploration. Now turning to Wayon. Wayon is our second producing mine. It will increase production company-wide by about 50%, but more importantly, because of low-cost structure, should more than double free cash flow at the mine site level. Project came in ahead of schedule and under budget. We poured first gold in August, but what makes us most proud is the fact that we're able to do this safely. So a total of 5.3 million hours were worked to build this project, and we didn't incur a single lost time injury. We expect to produce between 30 and 40,000 ounces of gold this year, which is up from the 18,000 ounces. We had the tech report, and then as we roll forward and look over the next five years, we expect on average to produce about 130,000 ounces of gold at all in sustaining costs of less than $800 per ounce. And that should result in about $60 million of free cash flow per year, and that's at 1250 gold. So with higher gold prices, those numbers are gonna be larger. Last fall, we announced a reserve increase. Reserves increased by 40% to 1.6 million ounces and extended the mine life from 9 to 13 years. We believe ultimately that we all like Sabadala will have at least a 15 to 20 year mine life and now with the project up and running we will move forward and recommence our reserve development program and there are more than a dozen targets within trucking distance of the mill and those four deposits that comprise reserves are still open. Wayo is key for Taranga because it, it, it's, uh, it moves us from being a single asset, single jurisdiction to a multiple asset, multiple jurisdiction gold mining company. 
Moving now to Golden Hill. Golden Hill's our most advanced exploration project. It's also located in Burkina Faso. It's on the Hyundai Belt, an area well known for high-grade gold discovery. So already you've got three mines in production, Semifo, Rocks, and uh, Endeavor. And so we're contiguous with the Endeavor property. This project has moved forward very quickly. So over the last two years, we've drilled a resource 415,000 ounces of indicated at just over two grams and a further 644,000 ounces at 1.7 grams. So in total, you're looking at roughly just over a million ounces of gold just at just under two grams, all open pit. It's a good start, but that number is gonna grow. So as we move into the ba balance of back half of this year, uh, we've got a drill program underway to increase that resource base. We've done the metallurgical test work and we're working on the engineering and the ESIA, all with the goal of um, filing a tech report in the first half of next year to convert this from an exploration license to a mine license. In terms of drilling, we still have a number of targets within that seven and a half kilometer radius and beyond that, we've got a number of targets along that 40 to 50 kilometer goal belt. Turn to Cote d'Ivoire, the third jurisdiction which we operate in. Um, Cote d'Ivoire, many people believe Cote d'Ivoire is the number one jurisdiction in Africa to explore for gold. We've entered Cote d'Ivoire through two JVs. The first is with MIM Invest. It's a company controlled by our largest shareholder, David Mimrian, and he's a board member. And then we've got the Afima property, which is just on the border with Ghana. And you've got a couple of those Ghanaian gold belts that cross onto our property. So these are earlier stage than what we've got in Burkina Faso, but we've got very good preliminary results. And now with Wayo up and running, we've got more free cash flow. We will begin a more extensive drill program on all seven of these properties next year. So when you look at our company, we focus and we work hard every day to be a partner of choice with all of our stakeholders and earn their trust and respect. We've got four pillars in our CSR program, and they uh, extend from focus on water to health to um, food security and income generation, education, and uh, culture. And uh, on terms of people, we focus on having the highest number of nationals, particularly those working around our mine sites, working at the company, as well as the highest number of nationals in senior management roles. Please report that in 2018, we reported a record in terms of Senegalese employment at Savadala, as well as the highest number of nationals within the senior management rank. So we're quite pleased with that. And we've been able to do that without sacrificing our safety record at the site. So we report less than one lost time injury per million hours worked and that's against uh, industry standard of about 5.8. So we're very pleased with that. We believe that our focus on our people and our corporate social responsibility have paved the way for our growth in Senegal, and we think that that is now assisting us as we move into both Burkina Faso and Cote d'Ivoire. So in summary, Taranga now has two producing gold mines in two separate jurisdictions. Beginning next year, capable of producing between 300 and 350,000 ounces of gold annually, both with plus 10-year mine lives. While the second asset only increases production by 50%, it will more than double free cash flow generation at the mine site level because of the lower cost nature of the production. Golden Hill is moving into the feasibility stage of development, and then beginning next year, we will be focused on those projects in Cote d'Ivoire. So the last slide that I'll leave you with comes back to the re-rate opportunity now that we have two mines in two separate jurisdictions. When you look at the slide, you can see that mining companies with multiple assets do trade at higher valuations. So now that we've moved into a new jurisdiction with a second asset, we'd anticipate the opportunity for a re-rate and commissioning, commercial commissioning will occur probably in this fourth quarter. It may take a quarter or so but we would expect a re-rate opportunity on the horizon. So, been doing a lot since the last time we're here, and six months from now, I think we'll report that we've been doing a lot more. So, that's the Tranga story.